Well, here we are back at this one spot that I find myself in constantly. But today we are going to finally get the water pump replaced on the bus. I've got a little bit of footage from that. And then also randomly, um, we play around with this GoGo -Go Elite Traveler thing and see about getting it working again. Turns out all it needed was batteries. But um, yeah, I have a GoGo -Go now. I'm not sure why. <laughs> Anyways, hopefully you enjoy. Hey, it's a thing. <laughs> Good luck Tetris to get out of there. <laughs> yeah, so I think, I don't know what happened there, but I don't know if rust forced rust. that out or yeah, rust it looks like, yeah, <laughs> sweet. I think our gear size looks like it's the same. It's about the size of the yeah. thing. All right, cool. They are transferring over the parts from the old one to the new one. Luckily, the engine has an oil leak, so nothing was rusty. Making custom tools for stupid plugs that aren't square. <laughs> it should have been. Was that loose? We should probably check the other one to make sure it's tight. Yeah. <laughs> That came off way too easy. <laughs> Medium tight. Yeah, just yeah. however they... However they came out. However they feel, yeah. <clears throat> Click. Looks <clears throat> like something. Yeah. Sweet. Mm, new water pump. <laughs> All right, so my friend just left. We got the water pump swapped out. Um, I'm just gonna work on some of the cleanup. Told him not to worry about that. Got the uh, Harbor Freight thick gloves. And uh, I'm going to, well, I'm gonna get this cleaned up and then I'm gonna start trying to put coolant in there. I don't think we should have any more leaks. I'll show you in a minute what was wrong with that one. It was rust basically, but uh, yeah, we got it. We got it installed. Actually here, I can show you. It's, uh... Uh, there you go. You can see it. Big shiny thing. Uh, these are all copper pipes, by the way. They've just been painted and stuff. That's why they look weird. But yep, big old water pump. Really strange setup with this. So right here where that funnel is, there's this tank. And that's where you dump the coolant in. But the radiator is way up there and the sight glass is up there. But from that tank, you basically hit this switch right here and uh, pumps the coolant in. So you can hear that pump running over there, and that is now pumping it all the way up there to the top. And that little tank only holds about four gallons, so a little bit of a process. MCI said this holds somewhere between 21 and 52 gallons for the entire system. Uh, I think since we're parked downhill though, the uh, heater system in the front, which has these two and a half inch lines going up there. I think those are still full and I closed the valve, so we'll see how much this takes. <laughs> Good times. $130 later, we have five gallons of concentrated diesel coolant. Um, that's nowhere near enough, but at least we'll get enough in there to tell if anything's leaking. Okay, so this is me happy. Um, we just put 15 gallons of coolant in and check it out. Right up here on the sight glass, we are just seeing a little bit of coolant. So we got away without dumping the entire system. Uh, the front half of the heater hoses and stuff are downhill. By the way, these are the coolant lines, they're two and a half inch. And yeah, 15 gallons, we got something on the side glass. So I've been having to chase around a bunch of little leaks because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, uh, 14 different connection points we had to take loose. 
15, 16, if you count these two. Um, so yeah, I, I think we're ready to fire this up. We've got most of the leaks taken care of. Um, there was one hose clamp back there. I was tightening it down and it felt like it maybe started to strip, but I just let go of it. Um, it was just barely dripping. So I don't know, we'll probably have to replace that one, but I think we might be ready to fire this hoopty up. So I'm gonna let this sit here and percolate for a while. I can still hear things bubbling down through the cooling system. Then I'm gonna turn on the key and see what happens. I mean, I'm confident the new water pump's not gonna leak, but all of those connection points are definitely a thing. <laughs> All right, here goes nothing. Let's see what kind of leaks we get. Okay, things are looking good so far. always a fun button to push right here. Up some dust. Okay, well, it's the next day now. I have no idea what part of this video is included or whatnot, but interesting random project. People are always like, oh, why do you always work on rehab chairs? I wanna know about folding chairs or scooters or whatever. Actually, nobody says that, but I happen to have right here a GoGo, uh, what is this? Elite Traveler by Pride Mobility. And I have two batteries for it that are both bad. Oh, I just realized I don't have the key for this thing. Um, oh, and also, I didn't, I didn't know it had a charging port right there. Usually the way you charge these is right here on the front of the battery. Uh, these just basically sit on here with gravity and they've got some connection pins on the bottom. Ew, I hope that's not leaking. Anyways, my thought is it is currently 3 p.m. on Wednesday and I wanna see if I can get this thing going. There's some auto parts stores around here. They have random batteries. I don't know if they're suitable for wheelchairs, but um, I think we're gonna pull one of these batteries apart, see what's inside of it, and see if there's something I can find locally and get this thing working because I've got two batteries. And well, so I had a, uh, what was it? Like a, a shop writer or something? I'll, I'll put a picture on the screen. It was like a little tiny group two power chair. And it was kind of cool, but then I realized it was stupid, so I sold it. And I needed a key and a battery for that. So I put the one good battery on that and the key. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure we can just rake this open or like pretty much any key would work. Well, my 114 key goes in there, but it doesn't seem to actually do anything. I don't have the rest of my uh, keys, <laughs> keys here with me, but uh, this thing's already loose and probably just put a toggle switch in there anyways. So I'm gonna grab some tools, hop on the floor. We're gonna open one of these battery boxes. We're going to defeat this switch and see if we can get this thing online. This is highly dependent on if I can find the batteries locally or not. And also that they're not lawnmower batteries. So anyways, um, let's see if we can make this weird little scooter do burn hats. Okay, I can't really tell. I think this framing is okay. I think there is just a bunch of Phillips screws on this thing to take it apart. So uh, let's see what's going on down in here. Apparently the screws are seven miles long. Does this thing go faster? Mm. Oh yeah, there we go. It does appear though that there's threaded metal inserts because these are not self-tapping screws. Yeah, well that's simple enough. And it would appear as though we just have some uh, semi-standard looking little Duracell type batteries in here. Uh, I probably should have brought my other charger with me. Well, these things have been dead long enough that, well, actually here, let me grab a voltmeter. Wait, do I have a voltmeter here? Uh, I keep packing everything, hang on. Yeah, this is the problem with moving. I don't know where any of my stuff is. Apparently voltmeter's not here. I don't have a proper battery charger, but we do have the old ship and shore here mounted on this thing. 
And I found this, digging through all my stuff. I'm assuming if there's batteries in here, they're probably gonna be leaking. I haven't seen this since like 2005. Okay, yeah, and a power, that's probably good. Uh-oh, it has a battery compartment that's screwed shut. Oh, this might be bad. Okay, what are we gonna find in here? Predictions. Oh, it's empty, awesome. And it's nine volt. Um, let me see if I have any nine volts here. I might've packed those too. Haha, <laughs> what about that? Give up the goods. Man, I don't think I have put a nine volt battery in something in, I don't know how long, but it's been a while. Does it come to life? Oh yes, we have a meter. Sweet, okay, volts DC. We'll put this on 20, that's kind of cool. It's uh, analog and digital at the same time. It has captive probes though, which are kind of a bummer, but um, yeah, let's see what we got here. Uh, 1.39 and 1.07. Hmm, do I bother trying to recover these? I guess there's nothing in here for it to have a quiescent draw necessarily. So let me pull one of these out of here and let's get the model number off of it and see if we can even buy these somewhere. I'm assuming it's just sitting in here. Maybe it's glued down. Oh, it's Velcroed. Who puts Velcro on batteries? <laughs> okay, so this is a 12 volt, 12 volt, 12 amp hour AGM. Uh, 12F2, I guess we're gonna take a look on um, batteries plus 12-12F2. Um, looks like the ones, holy cow, $53 each. That seems a bit steep. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of looking around see if I can find a set of these for under 100 bucks. But uh, I guess batteries aren't cheap these days. Oh, actually, here, I forgot. We're going to try and charge this thing. Probably not the best idea, but let me try just plugging in a uh, wheelchair charger and see what it does. Now, granted their voltage is pretty different and they will be out of balance, but I'm just curious. <laughs> yes, we're using a power inverter. I don't see something. Okay, it's cycling on and off. Where's our meat orb? So it's pulsing up to 18 volts and the voltage is going back down. So I may just let this sit here and cycle for a minute or two. You can hear it click. Nope, stayed on longer that time. Our voltage is slowly coming up. So I think I'm just gonna leave this here for a minute. Actually, let's change our range so we're not hurting the needle. There we go. Oh, it's going all the way up to 31 volts. Yeah, I'm gonna let this cycle for a few minutes and see if it'll start doing something. Just to kind of get an idea of if these batteries are anything at all, like if they're gonna take a charge. But um, yeah, I'm gonna do some looking around, see if we can find ones for a little bit cheaper somewhere. And uh, yeah, random, random scooter thing. Oh, I guess we'll have to put a switch up there too, but that's pretty easy. All right, I'll be back. We find ourselves back out here at the warehouse today, and this is a service cart from Harbor Freight. Um, I'm gonna be using this to move stuff around. I got the uh, big, well, this moving blanket. It's filled with staples, but it was on that wall. I ripped that down. I managed to avoid getting staples all over myself, so that was nice, but I've got the utility chair 2.0 out here today. That's the C300 that we modified a few months ago. Uh, link to that video up above and down below if you haven't seen it. But uh, I'm gonna put this cart together real quick and then need to start moving some stuff. Today, there will be significant progress. 
on all of this. So I'm right here in front of that weird chemical stain on the floor. I'll point the camera this way. And then when we're done, I will um, show it from this angle again. Actually, I think over here might be a better angle. Yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll just back myself in here by the door and we'll use this shot here. There we go. Yeah, as you remember, my previous Rubbermaid cart got turned into the laundry cart, which is right over there. Uh, also video about that as well, but uh, I got a dryer and a washing machine on there. But anyways, I did some stuff and um, I should be able to get most of this out of here today by myself. Well, we'll see. I'll be back when this cart is assembled. Okay, this is a bit more work than I anticipated. However, they did improve the design. The upright legs are now held on with carriage bolts that also hold the casters on. But, uh, yeah, you, plastic pieces don't slip together and you have to put the bolts on partway, but then there's room for the lock washers. So you have to tighten them down first, then back them back off and put the lock washers on. Anyways, we're almost done with the bottom. One more wheel. Yes, heavy breathing. We have a cart and apparently it's named Franklin. But uh, there was funny thing. There was one kind of funny thing in the manual here, though. It says uh, for best operation, the two straight casters go on the same end, and the two swivel casters go on the other end. I'm kind of curious what a cart like this would do, or why you wouldn't put the swivels on the same end. But hey, it's a free country, right? This thing, I think should I think it should be good to go it's got a cup holder and I got towel bar or something I don't know anyways I'm gonna rest for a bit and we're gonna use this to move some stuff and by the way these um, 2006 uh, whatever era these batteries are from maybe they're older than that Anyways, they're super old DeWalt NICADs. I managed to recover them. Well, at least this one. I just left it on the charger for like a week. Then I got here and it had an air flashing. I took it off, put it back on, and immediately said it was charged. And now it works again. There's one weak cell in there because after it's charged, you run the drill for a bit. Then you hear it slow down, then it'll continue running for a while. The trick is, because all those cells are in series, when it does that initial slowdown, you need to put it back on the charger. Because if you don't, that one weak cell can potentially charge up in reverse because it's in series. And if it's somewhere in the middle of the pack, other cells are passing power through it and it'll charge it up backwards. So I've been cycling this thing and the only damaged, actually, is the bit okay? Yeah, we rounded it a little bit, but whatever. Danger, enter at your own risk. Cells enter the chat. One hundred dollars later, forty-nine dollars each. By the way, I don't know if you've purchased anything at Batteries Plus before. They were going to refuse me service if I did not give them my phone number and name for the warranty. I'm like, you're giving me a receipt, correct? Doesn't that work? So, luckily, I played a gamble and won. They had a rack of their business cards there. So when they asked for my phone number, I was like, okay. And I looked down and I gave them their own fax number. <laughs> so anyways, um, we have these things now. While we were gone, we went ahead and left this thing blasting away. And it just has a red light. The cooling fan's not on, but that's what I like about this. It just spits out 31.3 volts no matter what. So uh, let's unhook it and see what our batteries are doing here. Uh, between the two of them, we're at 10.4 volts. So I think what I'm going to do is 
take these things back with me. I'm gonna put them in parallel and then use the little, that's over there, but the little Noco Genius Pulse Charger and see if we can recover them. I'm fully expecting that they will be trash. Um, but yeah, oh, I just realized they didn't charge me a core. Anyways, let's see what our voltage is on these new ones here. I'm assuming they are not charged, but you know what they say about assuming. It means you don't know. 12.8 volts or something. And we'll check this one. I know realistically I should put these in series for a while, but I don't necessarily feel like doing that, or maybe I'll do it later, or I don't know. This one is at 12.7. Let's check this again. Oh, okay, so they're both at 12.7. That'll do. By the way, that's the old ship and shore buzzing away over there, that battery charger. Um, oh, so Velcro, hang on, does this? Yeah, this doesn't look like it does anything to hold the batteries down, so they are pretty much relying on the Velcro and the law of gravity, which I'm pretty sure is not gonna be repealed anytime soon. Um, let's see, will this even come back out of here now? Here. Oh yeah. Maybe I can peel this off. These appear to be approximately the same size. Mm, Duracell Ultra. They had a uh, high amperage output or high rate as they called it, but the spec sheets didn't actually say what the difference was. And they were 65 instead of $49. Now these have F2 terminals. So I would assume that these can output whatever amperage these can handle. And the high rate ones also had the same terminals. So we're gonna pretend this is fine. Um, and I, in case you're wondering, I am definitely going to hop into this thing and attempt to run around. <laughs> um, because why not? Man, whoever designed this adhesive certainly knew what they were doing. They, they figured out how to make it strong and removable in a way that allows you to reuse it. So I guess um, the voltometer, where'd it go? Uh, here it is, 200 volts. All right, we've got 25 on there. Let's plug in our charger and see what it does just for no reason. Although I suppose, um, oh yeah, this charger's working. Uh, we have lights on it. Oh yeah, it says they're charged. It should be, however, pulsing them. And it does appear to be, I really like these chargers. Oh, there the fan came on. Oh, now it's charging. I can't remember right off who makes these. It wasn't UPG, but these are some of my favorite chargers. Even though they're five amp and even though they have a fan in them, uh, they do really good. I'm gonna go turn that thing off. It's super obnoxious. I really like these chargers. By the way, it is actually ship and shore. It's a marine charger. I really like those chargers, but the way they put the fan in there um, makes unnecessary noise. By the way, look how much space is in here. Once again, it doesn't show on the camera, but yeah, stuff. Eh, as a good steward of new batteries, we'll leave these charging for a little bit and we will work on bypassing the key on this thing. The key lock looks a little bit loose and these use a generic key anyways. I am going to preserve it so I can get a key later on because I may wind up selling this thing. Right now it's kind of a backup, 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 backup chair in case I need to get into really small buildings or something. Oh, looks like I ran the extension cord through there. But the idea with this thing is I can hop into it on a very temporary basis if I need to go inside a building that is um, smaller than larger. Oh. I wonder what the horn sounds like on this. Um, all right, let's get some crap off here and uh, take a look. Now, these things are pretty modular. The seat comes off, you just pull this and lift up. And then to change the battery, here, let's get some light on this. To change the battery, you just grab this and it pops off of there. Of course, there's more Velcro. And they have a little connector down there. So we don't need that. The back half comes apart too. This folds down into a weird carrying handle. And for no reason, I have an additional um, bags of trash, always bags of trash. I have an additional 
rear motor slash axle for this. Oh, those are tiny. Um, but yeah, these also connect with no wires. You can see here there's another one of those quick removal pins. So these things are pretty toolless and you can take them apart and throw them in your trunk. But they are not rehab seating, don't be confused. Riding a two by four with skateboard wheels on it would be a lot more comfortable than this thing. Yeah, so you have to hold your screwdriver kind of back at a weird angle to get on these, I guess. So these other screws underneath here, I think go through the handlebars and hold the whole thing on. So I'm using the drill because trying not to strip them. I'm using the drill because they were a little bit more um, obnoxious to remove. Now, potentially, mm, well, you know, come off. Does this plastic thing pop off of here or something? So I started poking at it with a screwdriver and it came off. I think there was just a little bit of crustiness or something in there holding it on. Um, oh, there's some little tiny clips right here on this plastic piece. Okay, um, I need to get back into my chair now so I can see this. I'm kind of sitting here in a weird position. Okay, so, ooh, we have a connector. That makes things easy. So here we have our key switch, which as you can see, is the nut on it is loose. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna stick a toggle in there for now. I uh, I wonder if I have any toggle switches left in here. I keep packing all my stuff. Um, ooh, it looks like we've got, something got a little bit hot or burned in there. Can you see that right there? I know the scooter works, but yeah, that little, there's a little IC down there that got really hot. Interesting. Um, hmm. I guess that's for a battery gauge or something. Interesting. And then down inside here, there's just like a little potentiometer thing that these paddles are attached to, and that does something with a speed controller. Uh, yeah, I guess that's, let's see, what is this? Oh, that's the fuse right there. How many amps is that? Can you see how many amps that is? Tell me how many amps. It looks like it's orange, so I'm guessing five, which doesn't seem like very many amps. Um, all of our wiring looks okay. There's a bunch of goo in that connector. Um, eh, all right. Obviously these are not high security locks and using a little rake, it is extremely easy to make this thing turn. I didn't even have to, uh, I didn't even have to actually rake the lock. All I did was put this in there and push it against the pins and it just turned. So anyways, it's in the on position now. I think I'm just gonna leave it alone. I'll probably tighten this nut back down and then order a key for this on Amazon. For now, what we'll do to turn it off is just pull the battery off since that's so simple. And we'll just tighten it up by, by hand. There we go. All right, the thing is on now. Um, yeah, we'll just, we'll just roll with that. This little beauty cap comes off of here some, oh. That's what was holding it together was this, like a little color accent. So we can probably just leave that off. Hmm. All right, everything looks good there. I'll plug this back in. Like so, stuff all this back down in here. Put that back on top. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna throw the screws in here. Then we're going to grab that battery pack, put it on here and this thing should come to life. These screws are all at weird angles. It's almost impossible to get in there and get anything on it. There we go. Oh, eh, we'll stick this back on. So pretty. Okay, so doing after all that, what words? After doing all of that, I realized this case is, an, is a lot nicer looking. The plastic is in nice shape. This one has been beat up quite a bit more. So maybe I should have put the new batteries in there, but we're already done, <laughs> whatever. Okay, let's, uh, let's drop this battery on and see what happens. There should be lights here. Hey, there's lights and it's beeping. Why is it beeping? Oh, 
It's a neutral. There we go. Uh, do we have to power cycle it now? Shut up. Okay, I figured out the problem. I found a, a beep decoder. We've got nine beeps, and the error is the key was turned on when the battery was installed. Apparently that generates an error condition. So, um, we will turn the key back off. Now we'll install the battery. Now we get to pick this thing on again. Now we can turn it on. Oh, okay, apparently you can't have the key on when you install the battery. It seems to move. All right, so now that we've taken it all the way apart and put it all the way back together, I need to put a key switch in there. Um, hmm, interesting. Isn't it cute? Look at this whole thing. Okay, um, I need to get some food real quick and then we will continue with whatever's going on. Has this thing been in frame the whole time? Eh, whatever. Apparently I'm sitting in this thing now. Um, it seems to move. It feels like it's, oh, the brakes are good. It feels like it's maybe 3.8 miles an hour or something. Turns really sharp. Oh boy. I'm curious to try that other, that, oops, it's not smack, it's not smash into my actual chair. Well, that was close. Um, I was gonna say, oh yeah, I'm curious to try that other motor over there. I don't know if they made different speeds of these things. Or, or what exactly? Speed run. Tiny bit faster. I don't know, to me this thing feels like it's maybe four and a half miles an hour. It might be five, but it's hard to tell. Um, seems to work. <laughs> uh, I wish the horn was at least a buzzer though. All right, well anyways, um, can I operate a camera and drive this at the same time? Okay, well, um, we swap batteries into this and it works. It would have been nice to put them inside the case that's a bit nicer, but um, eh, what are you gonna do? Uh, all right, time to get back into my chair. Uh, I've got this thing plugged into the charger and it's sitting here charging. So yeah, I think, uh, I think that's it for that project. This thing is back online. I really have no use for it, um, but at least it works and I spent $100 on it. Welcome back to a couple of days later. We have our little go-go traveler thing here and we have acquiesced some keys for it, which incidentally, these are A126 fire alarm panel keys. <laughs> they literally just use the same thing that fire alarm control panels use. You can see there's not much of a code on these at all. That's why it's easy to pick the lock, but uh, battery's charged. Let's put this in and see what happens. Oh, what do you know? It works. Yay, we have a thing. Ooh, it seems more peppy now. Hmm. Well, there you go. We're like $7 on Amazon. BT dubs, here's the update on the progress of clearing everything out. It's been a few days since I recorded that one clip, but as you can see, we've got a lot of open space here. Got the dumpster. I feel like I recorded something about this a little bit ago, but I don't remember. 
Anyways, I'm at another sorting stage right now. So what I'm gonna do is basically work on, like any of these crates and stuff that you see left are like empty or half full. I'm gonna work on combining those, getting more stuff thrown in the dumpster. And once I do more sorting, can take a couple of their loads over to the other spot. But uh, yeah, we're, we're coming right along here. I <sighs> plugged that charger back in. <laughs> I need to take that apart and put a different fan in it. Anyways, um, we're gonna call that good. Thanks for watching. I started saying that as a joke, but now I just keep saying it. I don't know, whatever. I'll see you in the next video or insert YouTube comment here, eh, whatever.